Good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for June 26th, and today's topic is titled, The Power of the of Attract. And so before we get started, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And so today I will be talking about that, and before we get started, um, I'll do today's Scripture Song. Amen. So let me... Uh, go here and uh, sing here, uh, Proverbs 20, verse 13. Press play. Amen. Sing along our brother Dean and sister Patty. <clears throat> Proverbs 20, 13. Love, Love not sleep, sleep lest, lest thou, thou come, come to, poverty. to poverty. Open, Open thine, thine eyes, eyes, and thou, thou shalt shall be satisfied, be satisfied with, bread. with bread. Amen. Love not sleep. Love not sleep, lest thou come, lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes, open thine eyes, open thine eyes, open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. Love not sleep, love not sleep. Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes, open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. Amen. All right, do that maybe one more time at the end of the broadcast. Amen. Now it's time to get into today's topic, and it is titled again, The Power of a Tract. And this is for June 26th, today, uh, Saturday. And it says here in Psalm 68, 11, The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. Psalm 68, 11. And today's author is C.S., I believe that's the initials for Chris Staub. Uh, so let me see here. Yep, that'd be Chris Staub, uh, pastor of Silverly Lane, or uh, yeah, Silver Silverly Lane Baptist Church in Dearborn Heights, Michigan. So let me read you what he wrote today on the power of a tract. <clears throat> he says here, for in scattering divine literature, we uh, liberate uh, uh, this thistle thistle down. Laden with precious seed. Uh, so, for in scattering divine literature, we liberate a uh, thistle down laden with precious seed, which, blown by the winds of the Spirit, float all over the, the world. The printed page never flinches, never tires, never grows disheartened. It travels cheaply and requires no hired, hired haul. It works while we sleep. It never loses its temper, and it works long after we are dead. The printed page is a visitor which gets inside the home and stays there. It always sticks to what it has uh, said and never answers back, and it is bait left permanently in the water. Uh, M.P. Uh, Panton streams in the desert, too. By Mrs. Charles uh, Kalman. Uh, so that was something that uh, was written by this woman here. Um, um, M.P. Uh, Panton streams in the desert too. By Mrs. Charles Kalman. Uh, Dr. Ford Porter of Indianapolis, Indiana, wrote a famous gospel tract entitled "God's Simple Plan of Salvation" in 1933. It has since been printed in over 100 languages, and multiplied millions. Uh, yeah, and multiplied millions have been printed. Its original pink and gray tones and subsequent cover variations have been used to reach many thousands. Someone wrote the gospel tract. Amen. Someone printed it. Someone paid for it. Someone translated it. Someone distributed it. 
Someone passed it out. Can you leave a tract? Question mark. Can you hand out a tract? Question mark. God's word will not return void. Amen. So we all can uh, hand out gospel tracts and leave a gospel tract somewhere. Amen. And so, matter of fact, going to be doing that tonight in Daytona. And then some will be going to Orlando to do that, pass out gospel tracts and hold out, hold signs and preach the gospel. Amen. So I'll pray for that. And so you too can go out and hand out gospel tracts and tell somebody about Jesus through uh, that literature, amen. All right, so that is the end of the topic, the power of a tract. So, gospel tracts do work. I've heard of many people getting saved from them. As a matter of fact, I know some people in my church, or in the church house at uh, Bible Baptist Church, the church I attend, amen, I should say. Uh, plenty of them uh, there that have been uh, witnessed to by somebody leaving a gospel tract somewhere and them picking it up and reading it and then getting saved by uh, investigating more into uh, what it was about and tell uh, it talking about Jesus. Amen. All right. So let's go out and get the word out by passing out gospel tracts or holding signs or however you um, go do it, uh, door knocking. So let's get out there tonight and, or today and tell somebody about Jesus. Amen. All right, let me get a drink of water there real quick. Okay, now it's time to get into today's hymn and hymn story from the hymn, Jesus Paid It All. Amen. Good hymn today. Jesus Paid It All. All right, so it was written by uh, El Elvina M. Hall and John T. Grape. <clears throat> and I'll sing this for you. I heard the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find Thy power and Thine alone Can change the leper spots And melt the heart of stone. Jesus paid it all, All to Him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. For nothing good have I, whereby thy grace to claim. I'll wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's Lamb. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. And when before the throne I stand in him complete, Jesus died my soul to save. My lips shall still repeat. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Amen. That's the hymn, Jesus Paid It All. Now I'll get into the hymn story here. Uh, it was written in 1865, and the passage is from Hebrews 9 12. So get the passage here, Hebrews 9 12. Go here, Hebrews 9 and verse 12 says, uh, Neither by the blood of goats or calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Amen. So Jesus paid it all and he did it once. He doesn't keep dying on the cross like the Roman Catholic Church likes to uh, tell you. 
Amen? So he died once for all. Amen? All right, so now we'll get into the story here. Behind the hymn, Jesus Paid It All. Amen? So let me put my glasses on here and try to get this here. All right. All right, it says, um, Jesus Paid It All. It was Sunday morning at Monument Street Methodist Church in Baltimore. Reverend George uh, Sh uh, Shrick was uh, droning on in lengthy pr uh, prayer while up in the choir loft, Elvina Hall's uh, mind was wandering. She thumbed quietly through the hymn book, then began uh, doodling on the... Um, or doodling on the flyleaf. By and by, these words came to her, which she scribbled on the front flap of her hymnal. I hear my Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small, thy, uh, Thou hast not my debt to pay, Find in me thy all in all. Yea, nothing good have I, Whereby thy grace to claim, I'll wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's Lamb, and now complete in Him my robe, His righteousness, clothes sheltered neath His side, or close sheltered neath His side. I am divinely blessed when from my dying bed my ransomed soul shall rise. Jesus paid it all, shall rend the vaulted skies. Amen. Elvira's poem fell into the hands of John T. Grape, a coal merchant and the church organist at Monument Street Methodist Church. As it happened, the church was being renovated, and the small organ had been taken to Grape's house for safekeeping. Then he composed the music to Jesus Paid It All. Through the years, the words of this hymn have been edited and altered, but it, uh, its great theme of redemption has remained untouched. Amen. Uh, the colorful preacher, uh, Roland Hill, was once preaching to a crowd of people when the wealthy aristocrat, Lady Anne uh, er er Erskine, uh, drove up in her coach, seeing her, uh, Reverend Hill changed his sermon. I have something for sale, he suddenly declared. Yes, I have something for sale. It is the soul of Lady Anne uh, Ers Erskine. Is there anyone here that will bid for her soul? Ah. Ah, he says. Uh, do I hear a bid? Who bids? Satan bids. Satan what will you give for her soul? I will give riches, honor, and pleasure. But stop, do I hear another bid? Yes, Jesus Christ bids. Jesus, what will you give for her soul? I will give eternal life. Uh, Lady Anne uh, Erskine, uh, you have heard the two bids. Which will you take? Yes, Lady Erskine, realizing Christ had purchased her soul, with his life's blood on the cross, took him. Amen. So that's a little testimony there about this uh, uh, aristocrat, aristocrat, Lady Anne Erskine, E-R-S-K-I-N-E. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. So she trusted Jesus as her Savior. Amen. All right. So that is the end of the him and him story. Jesus paid it all. And tomorrow's hymn and hymn story will be from the hymn, Now the Day is Over, written by, by uh, Sab Sabine uh, Baring Gould and Jeff uh, Barnby. And it was written in 1865, and the passage will be from Proverbs 3.24. Amen. So that will be tomorrow's hymn and hymn story. Amen. And yes, Jesus did pay it all. And you can have him as your Lord and Savior if you just humble yourself and trust him like uh, that uh, woman did. Amen. All right, so go ahead and sing today's scripture song one more time, and then we'll wrap it up.
<clears throat> All right. Proverbs 20, 13. Love, Love not sleep, sleep lest thou lest come, come to poverty. To poverty. Open, Open thine, thine eyes, eyes, and thou, thou shalt be shall satisfied, be with, satisfied bread. with bread. Here we go. Love not sleep, love not sleep, love not sleep, love not sleep, lest thou come, lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes, open thine eyes, open thine eyes, open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. Love not sleep, love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes, open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, that'll be it for today's broadcast. And before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then devotional topic really quick. So tomorrow will be the 27th Sunday, and tomorrow's uh, the, uh, scripture song will be from Proverbs 21, 25. It says, The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. And so that will be tomorrow's uh, scripture song. And then tomorrow's topic will be titled, let me get there, uh, Spiritual Babies? Question mark. Spiritual Babies. And the passage is from Hosea 12, verses 3 through 4. A good book there, Hosea. And so that will be tomorrow's uh, topic for the Baptist Bread Devotional. Amen. And again, tomorrow's hymn story will be from the hymn, Now the Day is Over, written in 1865. So hope you'll come back tomorrow afternoon for that after church. Amen. Lord willing. So until then. May the Lord richly bless you and hope you all have a great and wonderful rest of your evening. And like I was reading earlier, uh, it's good to get gospel tracks out. Another way to get the gospel out through gospel tracks. So let's go out there and hand some out tonight, amen, or wherever you're at. It might be morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you're at. Just go out there and tell somebody about Jesus, amen. You take some of those out and be like, can I give you some good news about Jesus? Very simple. And then move on to the next person, amen. I don't even really have to do much. Just say, can I give you some good news? And tell them that Jesus saves. And uh, most of the time, they'll take it. And if they refuse it, they'll usually say, no, thank you. Or they'll keep walking and just ignore you. And you just move on to the next person. Amen. Uh, like I said, Jesus' word will not come back void. It will do what it needs to do. Amen. Whether they receive it or reject it, they will uh, be convinced one day that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. All right. Well, Brother Scott signing off. So... May the Lord, Lord richly bless you until next time, and see y'all, Lord willing, tomorrow. I uh, apologize about the lighting in here. It's a little dark uh, in here tonight. but uh, All right, so see y'all next time. Bye for now.